Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are going to talk about game engine that should give you some serious wood. <laughs> okay, bad puns aside, today we are talking about Lumberyard. Now if you don't know already, Lumberyard is Amazon's version of CryEngine, and what I'm going to do is basically just float around here in the editor so you can get an idea of... Well, just how beautiful this game engine is, to be honest. I'm sitting here, this is the normal editor. This is built on a fork of CryEngine way back in the day. You see, uh, Crytek were basically going out of business and Amazon have, well, they have all of our money, right? That's kind of what Amazon's all about. And they decided they were going to get into games and game development in a big way. So what they did was they bought a version or a license of CryEngine, complete source code and all of that. This is their fork. This is their own game engine and it turned into Lumberyard. Now my ongoing history of covering Lumberyard has been a bit of a mixed bag. I'm really impressed. How can you look at this and go, okay, that, that's impressive. How, how can you not be a little bit impressed by what you're seeing right now? And Lumberyard has kind of always been this way. It's a very good looking engine. Now the tooling initially was and the installation process was, oh my goodness, I want to bang my head off the wall until I pass out. And those are things that definitely improved. Basically, if you go back through the history of Lumberyard uh, coverage on my channel, you'll see, I think 1.25, I said, all right, I'm done. I'm just done covering this engine no more. And then I followed it up with 1.26 where I said, oh, okay, actually that was a whole lot better. And now we're at 1.27 release. And I gotta admit, honestly, the release we're looking at today, not a ton new. What you'll notice around the outside edge though uh, is UI 2.0. I covered that with the 1.26 release, but it's kind of key in 1.27. It is now the standard. It is no longer experimental. It is the new norm. And that means they've got a completely updated user interface and that user interface is a whole lot better. So if you look at the controls, the way things work, the layout of everything, uh, that was completely rewritten for the previous version. As an experimental feature, it is a live feature now. Uh, on top of that, we've got a couple of other things in this release. I'm, I'm gonna be upfront, 1.27. There's not a ton new here. We'll get to that in just a second. And the thing that I was most excited about, uh, NVIDIA Blast Explosion stuff, uh, basically it gave you the ability to blow stuff up. And I was kind of excited about the opportunity to blow stuff up because, well, first off, I probably just got myself put on a new list. Yay. Uh, but beyond that, it, um, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for me anyways. It may work for you. You may have to have a very specific set of tools. We'll see that in just a second when we look at the release notes. Uh, but I really did want to start off with kind of eye candy. It's just bleedingly beautiful game engine that performs quite well. A couple of the things before we actually leave it, if you've never used Cry or uh, Lumberyard in your life, um, it is an entity-based system. There are a number of components. Your, your game entities are made out of components. On top of that, your scripting system, you can use C++ behind the scenes. But at the same time, uh, oh, I don't have my character selected anymore. So let me go back to my player. All right, here we got slices built up. There we go. You see here, we've got a script canvas attached. This is one of the ways you can control things. This is the camera controller we're about to look at. It is a visual scripting system, very much like Unreal Engine's blueprint system. It uses a flow chart based approach like so. You also have the ability uh, to use the Lua programming language uh, that kind of inherited. This is obviously the future, but Lua is also another option. And of course, C++. This is also a completely open source game engine. You can use this guy to your heart's content uh, and yeah, free. And I'm talking like really free, like no fake free here. This is completely free for you to use with one caveat. If you use online servers, if you don't roll your own, so if you don't provide your own hosting and your own server technologies, you have to use Amazon's technology. So you either do it yourself or you pay them. So they're obviously going to make their money off of you using Amazon services, such as Twitch integration, uh, EC2, S3 and so on. So they want you to host on their servers and that if you do host your online component on their servers, completely free. If you make a single player game with no online component, 100% free. And yeah, you get the source code, you get everything you need. And as you can see, it is quite a beautiful render. Now the majority of things here, and I got to shut down in order to show you this. So nope, we won't save. All right, that might have been a confusing screen. This is my previous take of this video, but hey, 
Let's leave that in the past. So what you see here, here is our currently active project. Uh, and this unfortunately is inherited from CryEngine. You can only have one project active at a time and they are ultimately under the Lumberyard directory structure. But fortunately, the installation process is getting more seamless. It is still quite painful to be honest. It takes a number of hours to get this guy installed, but it's, it's mindless painful now. So it's gotten a lot cleaner and it's gotten a lot more tolerant. It doesn't fail near as much as it used to. Also, very nice to see, they now tell you which version you are using. That's one of those things I cried out for in the past. So you could build it and then accidentally run the 2017 version for your 2019 project and it would throw you errors. Nicely, that is not a thing anymore. So what I've done here, I created a new project and the majority of, um, Lumberyard's implementation are done in a modular manner. It's something called gems. Gems are kind of like either DLLs or asset packs, and you can compile them in and extend the capabilities of Lumberyard itself. So you see a lot of Lumberyard is actually implemented as gems. A lot of them are automatically loaded, like the camera system is implemented as a gem. Uh, chat, play, cloud gems, and so on. So a lot of the new features and functionality that we are going to see today are available as gems. A couple of other things have happened here. Physics system, for example, um, they've gone from uh, using their own CryEngine physics. Now PhysX uh, from um, NVIDIA is now the default for physics, by the way. Um, and you can see that it's actually implemented as a gem as well. A couple of the other things that we are looking at today, they are also gems. So if you wanna add those in, basically you just come on in here to your project configurator and add them in. So for example, cloth, NVIDIA cloth, uh, that is one of those uh, new features that we're going to look at now. So let's go take a look at the release notes for uh, 1.27. Now, as I mentioned to start things off, this isn't a huge release at all. There's not really a ton here, uh, but there are a couple of improvements that were definitely worth mentioning. Things that, and when I said 1.26, good, you're back. I can work with you again. Well, one of the big things there was, while well, the installation process actually works, I didn't go through 19 hours of trying to figure out why my project didn't build. In this case too, in 1.27, literally, I just waited for everything to download. Once it was downloaded, I was good to go. Again, there is no progress bar for how downloads are going, which is a little frustrating. I'd love to see a bit of a countdown for if it's downloading stuff, because it's downloading like 30, 40 gigs worth of stuff. Please put a progress bar in there then at least we know if our network is hanging or whatever, small complaint. All right, so here we see UI 2.0 from 1.26, that is now generally available. It's no longer an experimental feature and it definitely improves the experience of working with Lumberyard. Uh, the next thing here, the one I was most excited about was NVIDIA Blast support, and now I'm less excited. We'll go to that one in just a second. Also, NVIDIA Cloth is now in there, uh, including complex cloth mesh support and constraints, performance improvements. Uh, PhysX is now the new default physics system for their physics engine. Um, sorry, it's, a, it's replacing their physics system for the physics engine. Uh, there's a new gem update to enhance the Twitch chat play experience. You're gonna find there's a fair number of gems about integrating Amazon's um, runtime stuff. That kind of makes sense because it's kind of, you know, who owns them. Uh, dynamic content gem, cloud canvas versioning support. And then next up you have, if you have Visual Studio 2017 and 2019 in the setup assistant, you can now be asked which compiler you wish to use to rebuild your project or your projects, which was actually a bit of a pain point before. So that is definitely nice to see. So we're looking at kind of the top level stuff. Uh, we get down into here, this is the release notes. So you can see a bit more of the details of what this release is all about. Again, the thing I was kind of most excited about and a little bit disappointed I can't get into is NVIDIA Blast support, because really I'd love to get in there and see how to blow stuff up. This is kind of like the uh, Unreal Engine's uh, Chaos Engine that I covered in 4.26, I believe, 4.26 beta. Uh, that's when they added this. It's basically the ability to destroy meshes. And I really, really, really wanted to check that one out. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, NVIDIA Blast for Lumberyard requires a side effects Houdini commercial or indie license to create assets. The apprentice license is not sufficient. And I don't have that. So I couldn't check it out, which is unfortunate. But if you have Houdini and you want to blow stuff up, you can now do that in Lumberyard, which eh, we all like that, right? Uh, so that kind of is where we're at. Uh, it's one of those game engines, again, that I'm I'm really kind of cheering for. It's weird because uh, Amazon spent like, I think it was $250 million or something like that to buy this CryEngine license and then somehow became an underdog. And I, I don't know how that happened, but that's kind of where it did. And uh, I've been in contact with some of the Amber, um, the Amazon Lumberyard team and they all seem like really good people. It seems like a really good project. It's moving in a really good direction. It's just, 
missing in some ways. You know, in each one of these recent releases, um, since, you know, the last one and then this one now, it's improved in the ways that it's had to improve. At the same time, the, the intangibles that you haven't seen in the past that really held them back have gotten better. Their, their documentation used to be not great. Now uh, we've got, you know, onboarding, better documentation to get you up and started, to get you over the learning curve. So basically before it used to be, if you're not an A to triple A style studio, you are so screwed trying to figure this thing out. Now, you know, there's some more beginner friendly resources. I wish they focused on this stuff day one, like two or three years ago when this was first released to everybody, because then we would have been down a completely different road. But hey, never late, better late than never. And it has been improving quite a bit in the most recent releases. So. Uh, this one, yeah, I'll be honest, 100%. The 1.27 release is, it's just a release. And we can't expect them all to be like out of the park. There's, there's nothing wrong with this release. It's just what the scope of what is here it's it's just a release. It's an incremental release, and that is what it is. But I'm interested to hear what you guys think of Lumberyard, the idea in general, where it is going. Have you tried it out? What did you think of it? Did you try it early and get thrown off by the build process? Would you like to see the build process get better in general? Let me know these things. Comments down below. And again, I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.